الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم Today we're talking about the issue of the Santa Fe school shooting and in that was the death of Sabika Sheikh and many other individuals as well uh, that were I believe 10 people died in the school shooting that took place in the very near close to us south of Houston uh, it's it's been a very a, a very tragic uh, story as you uh, hear uh, about is those ten individuals. There were some uh, substitute teacher that also died. Uh, really, what happened was uh, the individual that came in and started shooting. Uh, he literally had uh, a gun that he gained from his father, and we all know about the story. But the the, the point of this uh, talk really is to understand and ponder upon what we should be doing with our lives, uh, with the, the, the lives that we live, the, the busy lives that we live, and the, the, how much time is running out, especially uh, the, the focus on the life aspect, uh, which is really, and the time aspect. Uh, life is really short, and it is fragile. And what are we doing to make the most out of it? And that's really the, uh, the point of this talk and uh, focusing on the individuals that were really part of the victim in this crime, especially Sabia Sheikh who died in this very uh, incident. Um, she never knew that she was going to be uh, coming to this great country and learning and then all of a sudden her life will be taken away. So what do you think about that in that regard is what individuals as youth and young guys who often just only focus about that hey they want to achieve certain goal that they you know they want to attain these degrees what what can we take away from this story one of the biggest things we can take away is you never know about the future a lot of people they're focusing and they've already planned out the next 50 to 60 years it is a good thing to plan out your future but uh, what we have done is we've become dependent on it. We focused so much, as you see for Sabika Sheikh, uh, it was said that she was going back to Pakistan in June, mm -hmm. about a month later from when she passed away. Mm -hmm. So she already planned so far, but there's already there was a different thing that was planned for her. Mm -hmm. So what we can take away is even though uh, we're planning for our future, we're planning for our degree, for our jobs and everything. We should also know that there can be something that can change our whole life. Mm -hmm. This is something that we should take away. Absolutely. Uh, and especially the, you know, the other individuals as well that we sometimes, we don't only focus on Sabia Sheikh, but you know, they're young guys. They never knew, uh, they were involved in different activities at school. And then all of a sudden that they, you know, life is taken away and, and you're not really, at, at a young age, especially if you're a middle schooler or high schooler, oftentimes we just so much focus on our studies and then we really don't understand what is really the purpose of our life is and, you know, how it is so much fragile that it could be taken away any time. Uh, you know, we think that we have the best health maybe or we might be the very, uh, uh, in, might have a lot of money and we're perfectly said we are have a settled house and a settled family and then we f just don't forget about that hey life can also uh, come at you at any time where you know it could be taken away uh, so are we prepared and are we are asking ourselves uh, that am I prepared to meet God your creator and another thing what I um, what I consider is because of this event and because of all of the school shootings that has happened this year, now the kids, they are fearing to go to school. And even Islam teaches us to gain knowledge, to educate ourselves, to educate everyone in the community. And this was a turning point for this generation is that it, has, it was learning education there is colleges, there's universities, people are engaging in learning knowledge. Mm -hmm. And now what the situation has become is the students are going to fear going to the school, they're gonna fear learning. Mm -hmm. And what that's gonna do is once the education goes away, when ignorance is everywhere, that's gonna create more chaos. Mm -hmm. That's why the first step when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, when he uh, 
portrayed the message, when he spread out the message, he wanted to educate all of the Sahabi. There was one thing that I was, um, I read on Facebook. There was this post by someone where he was mentioning a small commentary about the verse that follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said what the verse meant is if you look at the situations of the people in uh, in Arabia at that time, before Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we kind of call that as Dora Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And at that time, people did not have education, as it said, day of ignorance. And what used to happen, it was chaos. People used to bury their daughters alive. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, he brought the message, and he started educating everyone. That's the role of Islam, is that's the message of Islam, is to uh, popularize education. Mm -hmm. And you touch base on a very important point, is that uh, the kids or the, the youth, especially, they're afraid of going to school now. Yep. And that is the fear that they have in their hearts, that, hey, what will happen? And uh, we saw a lot of absenteeism that took place the very after mm -hmm. days in other schools uh, that, you know, students weren't coming mm -hmm. uh, to the classes. So, uh, so as individuals, as uh, you know, our goal uh, as a neighbors in our community, as Muslims, we our expectations must be really high in terms of the role model. What are we doing today to bring you know to bring, to to ensure that there's safety in our neighborhood, uh, maybe in our uh, things we can be involved in and bring that compassion towards other people, uh, because sometimes like the if you look at the individual who killed the ten people. He actually let go of the people that he liked. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm wondering, like, you know, individuals that really died and he uh, he just maybe on his bad side. Mm -hmm. Wallahu alam, uh, what was the case? But, you know, as individuals and when in our school, I think we need to bring compassion towards each other. You might look different. You might have a certain background or certain um, uh, way of uh, personality you have. But what is it that we're doing uh, as a student uh, that, you know, bring that sort of uh, collaboration on the, uh, and the friendship and be, t you know, talking to everyone and not just because you look a certain way or you might have a certain background or religion, that we need to be compassionate towards all people. You might be a quiet one, maybe you might want to ask as a student that, hey, how, how's, how's your day going, you know? Uh, as a student, it's a responsibility, not just the responsibility of the teachers or the school administrators or the leaders uh, of that school, but it's also the responsibility of individuals themselves uh, as students that, uh, you know, what are they doing, what is their role should be as uh, when they're in the classroom. So they need to talk to every, uh, individuals in the classroom and, you know, be, be the role model. This is part. a big issue that I've seen also in schools that uh, they have their own groups and they would not talk to anyone else from any other group, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, those that are not popular in school. And what happens is when there is a certain group that is popular and everyone wants to go with them, there are some kids that feel left out. And, every, and those kids, uh, when they feel left out, no one talks to them. Mm -hmm. uh, it just, even they're going through a lot of things in their life and when they can't talk, to, talk it out, when they don't have friends, then there's a lot of chances that this can happen. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, you're uh, absolutely right that, you know, our responsibility is, you know, just uh, try to be vigilant uh, and be also at the same time, uh, be, have that compassion in your heart towards helping each other. Uh, you know, you might be going through certain uh, issues in your life, but, you know, you might have to also uh, engage your uh, school community uh, leaders, uh, also engage um, uh, the, uh, the, the people at our uh, masajids, at, even at uh, churches that, you know, we need to be in, uh, engaged in dialogues, engaged in those interfaith uh, type of events so that we bring that uh, compassion uh, towards the people and change the people uh, and see how what they're going through and try to in bring these people back into the masajids 
uh, in these environments where they are able to learn and be compassionate towards each other. So I was really reading about the very important facts about the shootings that took place and really uh, it's just amazing to hear and read about these uh, facts. Um, uh, unfortunately that you know we're rated as one of the countries that are as the very top on the list of gun violence uh, when we compare ourselves with the other countries. About 40% of Americans say they own a gun by the way, or live in a household with one according to a 2017 survey. Mm -hmm. And the rate of murder of manslaughter by firearm is the highest in the developed countries, in the developed world. Uh, there were more than 11,000 deaths as a result of murder or manslaughter involving a firearm mm -hmm. in 2016. And, and we look at the comparison with other countries. Uh, U.S. is at 64% in terms of the gun-related killings of all homicides. England is at 4.5%, Canada is at 30.5%, Australia is at 13%. And that's just amazed me that, you know, what are we doing um, as community member, members, community leaders, and the enforcement uh, that, you know, to bring that change, to bring that, you know, harder uh, uh, control uh, laws on the guns, purchasing guns. And uh, as parents, what are their responsibility when, when it comes to, you know, keeping uh, track of, you know, keeping these guns secure and not bring, uh, not be uh, le leaving it so loose that it becomes uh, more of a dead, uh, more threatening for others. Mm -hmm. And, and it, uh, for, especially with not keeping them safe. Uh, when we, as parents, we need to think about how we are responsible uh, in terms of attaining these guns and what are we doing with that. And a uh, very important thing that I, uh, I continue to ponder upon uh, in the Quran is really if you kill one person as if you c kill the entire humanity. And uh, uh, sadly that's something that we need to talk a lot about, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, with, the, with the way how things are going uh, in the lives of the young guys these days and they don't understand this uh, really very important principle in, in Islam that teaches us mm -hmm. that you know you kill one individual as if you kill the entire humanity. And just uh, a little comment on that verse if you just uh, look at the first shooting that was maybe the hardest that was the first time uh, like school shooting would be common but I'm talking about that first time and after that what I was reading there's been 22 school shootings Wow! and mm -hmm. the first time someone did it the second time another person was like okay he did it it was so easy the third time mm -hmm. so uh, the first person that killed it then he is everybody uh, all these shootings that have happened so far it's just a follow-up to that first shooting right and it's the same way that it's just not killing one, but there's so many people that have been killed in all of these shootings. True, you're absolutely right. It's just have that negative ripple effect yeah. on the others, uh, and now it becomes because it becomes so much okay now because whether they're playing Call of Duty and mm -hmm. you know they have this negative uh, emotions that they uh, take away from it, and some some of the psychology studies we learn from it that. You know, you get that ad, uh, adrenal rush mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, how uh, w whenever we're, you know, engaged in certain types of activities, it's just that feeling that you get. And um, uh, the youngest killer, by the way, uh, according to one of these facts that I'm reading off of uh, BBC, uh, is that the youngest killer is Andrew Douglas Golden, 11 who ambushed students and teachers as they left Westside Middle School in Arkansas in 1998. And he was jointly responsible for the uh, Mitchell Scott Johnson 13 for five deaths and uh, 10 injured. And the age of killers in 91, in 91 mass shootings, uh, the age was 34 years of age as an average age. So that's just amazing to, um, you know, look at these facts and then we ponder upon the what our Islam teaches us to be passionate, compassionate, to be, to have the, the, our Islam teaches peace and that's what we need to think about and continue to um, um, reflect upon um, as we hear about these facts and you know the life is very short and it is fragile so we need to be prepared and be uh, ready at all times in regards to 
uh, what could happen anytime. So are we ready to meet God? Are we ready to meet your creator? So what I want to mention over here is about what you were saying that in schools we should create a connection with everyone. If there's someone that's on the side that's upset or someone that's crying, we should ask them what's wrong. We shouldn't just make groups. And that's what Islam teaches us. Islam teaches us about brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Islam teaches us that if there are three of you, you shouldn't whisper in the ear of one. So because that would make the other feel bad, mm-hmm. that you're maybe making fun of him or something. Correct. Islam is teaching us to the smallest point. And the first thing when you meet someone, you say, Assalamu alaikum, mm-hmm. peace be upon you. And you wouldn't make that dua, you wouldn't make that prayer for someone if you hated him. So Islam is saying that when you're going to meet him, have that brother, have, have that love, even you don't know him, have that love for him, that you would make the prayer for him, that peace be for you. Absolutely. So when you do give salam, do it with your full heartedly. Mm-hmm. Don't do it half heartedly. Just take. Anything out that if you have something against, just let it all go. Mm-hmm. Just do it with a full smile. Don't just have a fake smile and then inside you have something mm-hmm. else. And that makes us very hypocritical. Yep. Uh, in fact, when we are, you know, saying salam, but we have something against, like mm-hmm. you said, you're absolutely right. So uh, may Allah help us uh, really uh, learn from the, you know, these uh, t- talks. At the same time, may Allah help us really learn from these situations that have developed uh, recently mm-hmm. and what we learn from and, you know, to self-reflect on and get the most out of our time because time is really the essence and, you know, we need to bring, uh, ask Allah SWT to bring barakat mm-hmm. in our time, in our health, in our wealth and, and just focus on uh, what is really uh, uh, the bigger picture th- and that is to make the most out of our time. Mm-hmm. So, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.